Hello learners, this brief presentation is intended for those pursuing MA English under IGNO. This is the block 1, unit 1 of MEZ4, the nature of language. Myself, Dr. Ataur Rahman, Associate Professor, Dhemadi Commerce College, Assam, and I am also the coordinator of IGNO Study Center 37008 and also counselor of MEZ. In this brief presentation, I am going to talk on the definition and concept of language and the different theories regarding the origin of language. Before we go into the definition and the different theories regarding the origin of language, let us imagine a society without language. Had there been no language, how could we communicate? How could we talk with our family members and friends? Can we imagine a society without language? Without language, how could we express our thoughts, our feelings, our, our emotions? Can we imagine a society without language? Really, it seems to be very impossible, unthinkable, our life without language. Let us see the definition of language. In your block, several definitions of language is given, but I have picked up only two definitions of language. The first one is from Fong Finn and Rodman in 1974. According to them, language is that system by which sounds and meanings are related. So in this definition, what we find is sound and meaning are very much related in a language. We cannot separate the two. Another definition of language is given by Brown in 1984. Language is the most sophisticated and versatile means available to human beings for the communication of meaning. So in both these definitions, what we find is the sound and meaning are very much related and language is mean for communication. It is a vehicle of communication. It is the only means of reaching the other person. So language is or language comprised of sounds. First there are meaningless sounds. The alphabets that we have in our language, in any language, the alphabets, they are nothing but mere sounds. First, the sounds are combined together to form words. Then words are combined together to form sentences and sentences are combined together to form paragraphs. And several paragraphs are combined together to form a larger text. And language, it is a means of communication. As I have already said, it is a vehicle of reaching the other person. It is a means of exchanging, sharing our thoughts, feelings and emotions. It is a means of communication. We have to remember language is nothing but a means of communication. Now when we say communication, the communication language, the means of communication comes under or it can be categorized under two broad divisions. The first one is the verbal communication or the oral communication. What is oral communication? The everyday communication that we make with our friends and family members. Oral communication as the teacher communicates with the students as at the moment I am communicating with my learners. The other one is a non-verbal communication. In non-verbal communication there are two types. Written communication and signed communication. Now, in certain situations where the oral communication or the verbal communication is not possible, we can communicate or we can reach the person through written means. We can write the person, we can write a letter, we can give a written message to the person, provided the person to whom we are communicating should understand the written message. Meaning is he or she must know the alphabets and there is a sign communication. What is sign communication? Now in our society we have 
or we come across many deaf and dumb people. And when we need to communicate with these deaf and dumb people, how do we communicate? We communicate with the help of gestures, with the help of our hand movements, with the help of nodding the head right and left, with the uh, help of our hand. Now, one very good example of sign communication is when we see the traffic light in the traffic post. When there is red light, we know that it is dangerous to cross the road now. And when there is green light, we know that it is safe to cross the road. The red light and the green light, they are speaking a language. This is called sign communication. So communication are of two types, verbal communication that is oral communication and non-verbal communication that is written as well as sign communication. Now let us come to the second part of this presentation that is different theories regarding the origin of language. The first one is the divine source theory. Different religions believe that a divine source provided human being with the language. It is the belief in all religions that God, that God has given human being language. That is language is a gift of the Almighty. And we also notice that the alphabetical symbols or ideographs used in writing are often associated with divine images. This you will find in many major religions. Then the second theory regarding the origin of language is the natural sound source theory or the wow of theory. This theory suggests that early man and women imitated the sounds of the creature or object he was referring to. Take for example a child when he is unable to pronounce, when he is unable to speak, he can just identify certain objects by seeing a dog. The child will say it's wow wow. When he sees a cat, he will say it's mew. Meaning is, the child is imitating the sound of the dog and the sound of the cat. All languages have words which has come from naturally occurring sounds of animals and nature. In English, you have a number of such words. For example, the word cuckoo. The word cuckoo has come from the word the bird cuckoo. That is the sound the bird cuckoo makes. And another example is the word wind. The word wind has also come or it has originated from the sound of wind. Similarly, the word water, it also has a liquid sound. There are many more examples, but it cannot be concluded that language originated from imitating the sound of nature. Let us come to the next theory regarding the origin of language. It's called the Pope Book Theory. In 1871, Darwin proposed that the origin of language can be traced from the involuntary exclamations of pain, pleasure, surprise, or wonder which human beings make. This theory believes that language is only a refinement upon our emotional interjections like ah, ha, sh, etc. which are not far removed from the cries of animals by being often used as an exclamation of contempt or disgust the word kuku has come and this theory has been named as the Oh, oh, theory. 
The supporters of this theory believe that all language has originated in this way. Let's come to the another theory. This is the Ding Dong theory regarding the origin of language. It was advanced by the German scholar and philologist Max Muller and it has been adopted by many others. According to this theory, language has originated in the sense of rhythm which is innate in man and relating him to the rest of the universe which is essentially rhythmical. Now, according to this Ding Dong theory, it is based on man's tendency to imitate not the sound, but the movements in nature. Now, it is believed that primitive man, they must have observed the rhythm in the flowing of a stream and the swaying of trees and they must have Ding Dong phonetically to them, partly by way of accompaniment and partly in imitation. Even today, we find people, they have the habit of whistling while engaged in manual walk. The Ding Dong theory, it may possibly contain some amount of truth, but we cannot altogether accept even this theory, the origin of language. Let us come to the another theory regarding the origin of language. This is called the Jester theory. Wilhelm Wundt and Sir Richard Paisley have concluded that language developed from gestures made with hand and body or sign language. We still use this form to communicate with a dumb and deaf person. The upholders of theory are good that a gesture of the hand is often accompanied by a corresponding movement of the vocal organs. In the course of time, man is supposed to have passed from sign language to spoken language. Let me give you two three examples. The words I and me, when you pronounce these words, the lips are drawn towards the speaker. In the same way, when we pronounce the word you or thou, the movement is towards the person addressed, meaning is to whom we are addressing. My lips will my lips will point towards the other person to whom I am addressing. In the same way, when we utter the words here or when we utter the words there, we find a similar movement within our vocal organ. So with the paces of time, with the paces of time, man has developed from the sign language to spoken language. This is what Wilhelm Kuhn and Sir Richard Passett has to say regarding the origin of language. Hope you have understood the different theories regarding the origin of language. In my next presentation, I am going to talk on the characteristics of language and the different definitions of sociolinguistics and pragmatics. Thank you very much.